Hi guys, Lisa here from Perfect Form Physio and the Ballet Blog and I'm here with Sarah today to have a chat about one of my pet peeves which is why shin splints is not an accurate diagnosis and this is something that frustrates me a little bit is when I hear that people have been given that as a diagnosis because really it's not. Shin splints is a kind of overarching umbrella term that actually covers three completely different injuries so if you do get diagnosed with this please ask them for more detail. Usually it's one of three other injuries which are anterior compartment syndrome, tibial stress fractures and medial tibial stress syndrome. So what I'm going to do today is go through each of those, what they are, what are the kind of distinguishing factors about them, why they happen and what we can do to fix them. So the first one is anterior compartment syndrome. So if Sarah just puts her leg up, at the front of your shin, you have your shin bone here, then you've got this muscle on the outside here, your tibialis anterior. This is a really interesting muscle because it has quite a thick sheath of fascia that sits around it. What happens is if this muscle swells for whatever reason, whether it's due to overwork or increased blood flow, it can get a little bit swollen and it takes up more space than there is. It creates a lot of pressure inside and this is very uncomfortable. I actually had it one summer when I was waitressing from wearing slides because I was lifting my foot up and the front of my shin got incredibly painful and I ended up icing my shins in the back of the hotel. So this is something that you really don't want to mess with. It's really, really hard to settle down once you do have it. It can happen as a chronic injury by overusing through the front or it can happen acutely. So one day I was driving to a performance that I was going to see and I got a phone call, Lisa, are you here yet? I said, what's happened? And they'd been rehearsing on stage, they'd done a jeté in second and one girl's heel hit another girl's shin and she had this immense pain and she'd had this acute swelling it created so much compression that she started getting numbness and pins and needles down into her toes. So whether it happens either acutely or chronically, we need to deal with it kind of as soon as we're aware of this. Now, one main reason why it happens, if we jump up into standing, a lot of people overuse their tibialis anterior when they're trying to hold their first position. So if Sarah kind of rocks back onto her heels, you can see this tendon here pops up. This is attached to this tibialis anterior and it can get really, really tight in the front. Come back and let it relax. <laughs> Good. So we want to make sure that this tendon is mostly relaxed. A little bit of flicking is okay. Constant gripping is not. So this is something that I really want you to work on if you've been struggling with pain in the front of the shins. When we go through rehab, a lot of the focus is on releasing the fascial tension through here but also developing control in the hip so that we are controlling our turnout from the top rather than trying to brace from the foot. Now number two is stress fractures of the tibia. So if we just go into parallel, this is more where there's an acute pain and you can usually feel it ow, 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 pressing right on the tibia. Now this happens for quite a different reason. Often this happens due to a lack of shock absorption in your jumps. So as you're landing your jump, there should be a certain amount of squish and deformation in the foot to absorb some of the load as we go on fondue. If your midfoot is very stiff and you land with a thump, all of the load goes straight up into the tibia and over time this can cause stress fractures. So the rehab for this is a little bit different. It's very much mobile, uh, focused on mobilizing the foot and getting the correct mechanics and strength to control your jumps again as well as determining some more appropriate strategies for controlling the hip. So if you do have acute tenderness through the front of the shins it may be more a stress fracture than that anterior compartment syndrome. And the third one is medial tibial stress syndrome. So we've just gone to first again. This one is more felt on the inner border and this is related to your tibialis posterior which sits in the back and it wraps around the front. So if we go into first again um, this often happens, say you're going into a plie or landing a jump and you really brace the foot to try not to roll but you overuse this tendon through here. This can cause a lot of kind of pulling up of the tissues as they attach onto the bone and can create quite a bit of tenderness through here. While it's important that we don't roll in and really let our knees drop in, we need to control this from the top of the hip rather than bracing through the front of the ankle. And this is a very common injury in dancers who've been told off for rolling. 
So if you have had any pain in the front of the shins, please don't accept shin splints as a diagnosis. As you can see, there are lots of different reasons why these things happen. And it's really important that we understand exactly what the injury is, what the contributing factors are, and how to treat it in order for you to get back dancing as soon as possible. If you do have any issues with your shins, uh, we'd love to see you in clinic and see if we can really work out where it's coming from. If you're working remotely, we really advise you to look into the Will I Have a Dance Again program, which helps you keep condition in the rest of your body while you're able to do the appropriate rehab that you need for your feet and ankles. I hope that helps explain that and we'll talk to you soon.